The title of my message is Mystical Community. Now when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he said, I'm speaking to them in parables. But to you has been given the ability to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And so to be to be a mystical person means that God now is caused you to have this extra knowledge of a of a realm of a domain that affects this realm that domain is the realm of the spirit and that realm of the spirit has a greater impact on this physical realm so when i look at the physical realm when i look at a physical doctor's report i don't choose to put my faith in that but i choose to put my faith in something that is unseen it's a mystical thing it's a mystery and when i put my faith in what god has said about my body or your body or somebody right now there is a energy that is transferred from that spiritual realm into the physical realm that affects your physical body it superimposes itself so that your physical body now can 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 function according to god's desire romans chapter 12 verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world the knowledge of the world enables you to be conformed to it so which means you begin to behave according to the patterns that are set in by the world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove that good perfect and acceptable will of god when we talk about a mystical community we're saying a community that exists with the sole purpose of proving god's will the will of god in second peter says this second peter 2:9 the will of god is that none should perish what what pastor what is the will of god for my life that you shouldn't perish it's that simple the will of god is so that none none no one should perish so which means when you come into the kingdom of god he 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 rescues you out of darkness into light so that you should not perish john 10:10 10, 10 says i have come so that they may have life and life in abundance in abundance you may have life and life in abundance you may not just only have life but you have it in abundance he wants to fill your cup but then he wants to fill it so much that it begins to overflow you begin to prove the will of god when your cup begins to overflow open your bibles to matthew chapter 5 and we'll read from verses 13 to 16 he says you are the salt of the earth you see the language of the bible is so awesome it reveals the heart of god he says you are the salt of the earth He said blessed are the merciful for they shall inherit you know the kingdom and the mercy and all that kind of stuff. He reveals all that stuff but then he turns to the disciples and he says you are the salt of the earth. Why did he say that? Is because they were hanging out with a mystic. They were hanging out with God. They were spending time three and a half years with a divine being that became flesh and came on the earth. You must understand something of him has rubbed off on them. So when he says you are the salt of the earth he's talking about the earth as a planet a physical system a physical process a physical everything that we see human beings animals all that kind of stuff the earth okay so he's saying so he says you are the salt of the earth so what is salt salt is an element of transformation when you add salt to something you can't take it out Now think of it in terms of where God placed you in the city that you live in. Think of it in where God placed you in the workplace that you're in, in the business that you've started. Think about the football team that God has placed you in or the the youth group that God has brought you in. Wherever God has placed you, your responsibility is to enhance the flavor of everything that is around you. God fully understands what he is doing with you and where he has placed you you're called salt of the earth because you're meant to enhance everything that is happening your company that you're working for they don't exist for you you exist to enhance what they are doing are you with me so the first thing be a person that adds value 
That's the first thing. The way you fulfill your purpose in life is be a person who adds value. <laughs> See, because we're looking for glory. I need a reward. But that manager who you add value to will see your faithfulness to him or her and will tell his boss, that one is special. That one adds value to the company. Are you with me? Look to add value wherever you are. So the second point is be a person of discernment. We need to discern the reality of where God has placed us. A lot of us will look to, uh, we go into places and we don't discern it because we are looking at those places based on the knowledge, human knowledge. But you've got to enter into places where you have divine wisdom. When I talk about discernment, I'm, I'm talking about this. Your responsibility is to discern the level of truth that exists. A lot of us use discernment only when we want to see the negative. But discernment is needed for when you want to discern the reality of God in a person. Are you with me? Verse 14. You are the light of the world. You are. Not you will be. You are the light of the world. So when the Bible says that you are the light of the world, he's saying that you are an illuminator of truth. You are, that's the fourth point, I think. Third point, third point. Be a person that illuminates the truth. There's goodness in every single person. And you and I need to shed light. How do you shed light? It's by fourth point, practice the truth. A lot of times we come into a community and we have greater expectations of other people practicing the truth than us. Practicing the truth means I hear the word that I receive the reality of God and now I go back, I go out of these doors and I apply the truth. I apply the truth. I practice the truth. Woo. I practice the truth so that my life can be changed. My heart can be changed. Why? Because there's a need for you to practice the truth. Practicing the truth enables you to increase or mature in illumination. And every time you get illuminated, you begin to see everything that is good in people. See, when we talk about you are the light, when you truly practice the truth for your life, practice the truth for your life. You, 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 you. Apply the truth for you. Don't worry about anybody else. You just do it yourself. When you come into a place where you need to be the light, you only see everything beautiful. So the words that come out of your mouth are everything beautiful, everything that is good. Even though there are flaws, they are not focused on the flaws because it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. See, God is good to you because He wants you to change the way you think. When you change the way you think, you come in order. When you come in order, you don't perish. So the last thing, fifth one. Be a person that reveals the light. Go back to Matthew chapter 5. And we can close with this. Matthew chapter 5. Let's read verse 14 again. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. When you practice the truth, no one can hide your light. When you practice the truth, no one, nothing, the clothes you wear, nothing can hide your light. A city on a hill that cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. All. Verse 16. Now, Jesus says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is very, very interesting. Very important for you to understand. A lot of us think that when I practice the truth, I need to do it in secret. 
Here Jesus is giving us an invitation. Practice your truth in front of everyone, man. Practice. Show, show your worship to God. <laughs> Come. It's time, for, it's time for people around you to see what your relationship with God is like. You must understand that when Jesus is inviting you to practice your faith in public, He's not saying try to impose it on other people. He's saying practice it in public. Don't be ashamed to pray in public. Oh, come on. Don't be ashamed to worship God in public. Don't be ashamed to call yourself a Christian. Don't be ashamed to, to, um, to read your Bible in public. Don't be ashamed to practice the truth. When you hear something in the news, when you make it a decision to live in the opposite way, you choose to live according to the kingdom of God. Look, in a community like this, we have a lot of people with broken stories. We have, a peop we have people with lots of flaws and God brings them into a community because... Your light can reveal to them everything that is good in them so that they can see their God's goodness in them and they can change. Your responsibility is to practice the truth. I want to give you a, give you freedom in this church that anybody who speaks negative about the church, any church or any person, you have the freedom to say, this is not what I practice. We don't practice this. We don't entertain it. This is not part of our culture. That is an inferior light. If this light is in you, how great is the darkness within you? Jesus says that. How great is the darkness within you? What's he trying to say? He's saying that there is light on the inside of you and because you're not practicing the truth, that light has become dull. And because of that now, you can't clearly see the goodness in people. You can't see the goodness in your co-workers. You can't see goodness in the, in the purpose of your company. You can't see goodness in the purpose of the church. You can't see the goodness in the purpose of the economy or the city or the government, the, the city that we live in. You look to add value. God has placed awesome people around us. God has placed us in a group of people that is strong, that has great futures ahead of us. We need to focus on calling the greatness in, out of one another. Just begin to call out everything that's good in your husband and that's exactly what he will become. Start calling out the good in your company. Start calling out the good in your economy. Start calling out the good in your boss. Start calling out the good in your wife and your children. It's very important that we understand that we have to practice the truth. But also while practicing the truth, don't be afraid to reveal your light. Don't be afraid to let this light shine. Because when people see your good works, let people see your walk with God. Let them see you demonstrating the goodness of God. You don't have to say anything. Your life will speak louder. All right, bless you.